Um, Tony Rowley, here we are at uh, Holy Cross Church on, on Tracy's Road. What is your role here? Well, Michael, I'm the parish deacon, and my role here is to assist the parish priest in all the things that he does, things like baptism, weddings, funerals, and uh, general things like benediction, holy hours, and things like that, just to sort of help the parishioners with their faith, I suppose. And you became a deacon in July. Was that a formal ceremony? It was, yeah, very formal, yes. It was a bishop, six priests, and about eight deacons, I think, so. Is that a compliment? All no, those people no. being there? <laughs> no, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, without sounding like the X Factor, what has been... I'm going to sound like the X Factor. What has been your faith journey? Oh, from where? <laughs> <laughs> from birth. Oh, wow. Well, um, incredible. Uh, I don't know. Let, let's, let's take it really from about my 30s, I suppose, when I, I, I came back to church for the... I think a number of times I come back and couldn't, couldn't really find a place. But in my 30s, I found a place here. And the more and more I grew into the church, the more I actually uh, got involved in doing things here. And I started off by Father Heston in his day, asked me to become a reader. And then Joe Salvinsky asked me to become an altar server. So I, I started that and then I became a Eucharistic minister. And I suppose the more and more I did, the more I, I, I was feeling more and more at home here. And uh, it was probably in 19... 1998, I first learned about the diaconate, and I asked, I asked around, and then I, I read a number of articles on this, and there's a book about the permanent diaconate, and I thought, this, this seems like it's for me, and I, I went forward, uh, was interviewed by Monsignor Arthur Barrow at the time, he said I was the right sort of person, but um, got away, my daughter was a bit young at the time, so fair enough. And then it just went out of my head and I just I left it for many, many years and I was a pastoral assistant here. Yeah. So I did a lot of other bits and pieces that I could do. Um, when, when uh, I think it was about 10 years ago now, something like that, when it started coming back, these feelings started coming back again. So I went and I was interviewed by Father Adrian Graffy, said to the same, you're right for the role, but we haven't got a bishop at the time. So it's when Bishop, before Bishop Allen came along. And I, I, I said, well, okay, that, that, that's fine. And then I just said, that's it, that's the, the, the thing. But it was people like Father Bernard, uh, Deacon Michael from Old Harlow, Father Clement, who's a visiting priest, comes over every year, who, who said, kept saying to me, well, I think you should be a deacon. So, so I went forward again and I, I spoke to Father John Harvey, had an interview with the bishop and, and I started, and that was it then, really. It was just a whirlwind, bang, off you go. So. And what do you... It's not a job, is it? It's a vocation. No, it's a vocation. Okay. What does that mean, a vocation? It, I think it's this way of life. I think it's not. It's not just about the things I do in here. It's about. It's about everything every day. So for me, the, uh, the when, from when I get up in the morning till I go to bed at night is about my me being a deacon. So. The, the church here we are, as I said, at Holy Cross. And, um, this church was built in the early sixties. Nineteen sixty-four. Yeah, there's a very good potted history on the Holy Cross website, very well written. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, but the congregation has come and gone, hasn't it? There's been yeah. falls and rises, yeah. etc. Um, it, how, how is the con audience and, and what is it these days? How is it? Um, okay, I think when I first came here, the majority were probably um, Irish, I would imagine, your dad being one of them, <laughs> obviously. Uh, and... and uh, there was a number of other things, but very few other than that. You know, you might have had a few English. I remember an Australian guy here as well, uh, David. Um, but I think nowadays, that, oh, Italian, very strong Italian community as well. Um, they had their own mass, the Italians, uh, once a month, I think, which is really nice. I came to it once, couldn't understand a thing, but, but I loved the, the fact they all sat together in a, in a bunch, as opposed to when we come here and it's all spread around. The, um, I think the influx of, of the African community has, has made a massive difference to us. I think it's been, it's, it's, it's been superb, I think. It's been one of the best things that's happened to this church. And every year, or well, before COVID, we have an African mass, which if you get a chance, Michael, come down and have a look at it. It's, it's amazing, it really is. Uh, and and that's, that's probably the change. So there's, then now recently, we've got a lot of Eastern Europeans, but they tend to, particularly a lot of Poles, will go over to Our Lady Fatima because of the Polish priests over there having Polish masses. And 
When it comes to, and, and you're, you teach as well, don't do, you? Yeah. And, and do you enjoy, and you teach religious studies? I do. What do you enjoy about that? Oh, sharing my faith, I suppose. Yeah. I, I'm enthusiastic. I was talking to one of the year 11s yesterday, and she said to me, the one thing she loves about my lessons is the enthusiasm I have for my, for, for my teaching. And it's just, I just love teaching, and I love teaching about, well, about any religion, but obviously about my own mostly. But I, I and A level as well. A level. Yeah. And that's not easy. No, no, no. <laughs> I love, I love teaching A-level because it's, it's a different challenge and I think having the people who've chosen to do it and people wanting to do it, I think that's always, that's always a really nice thing so I thoroughly enjoy that. Do you have theological differences with people? You're a Catholic and you're a Catholic church and you're amongst Catholics but there are things that you disagree with other, other, other Catholics that you discuss and say actually my opinion on this is different to yours? No. I don't, think so. I don't think so. No, I mean, I, I, I do, I do keep a very strong Catholic line for my, my. Um, I always have done. I think even before I was uh, came back into the church. I think it's something that probably like yourself. It's something you're brought up with, and something that you you have as part of who you are. And so, I, you know, there are things that I think. Well, perhaps the church should change, but at the moment they haven't changed, and so I stick with what the church says. So. And this particular, we're coming up to Christmas, this, this is a particularly special time for, for the Catholic Church, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, we, we, try, we try to make Advent special, though, because I think sometimes you can get caught up, particularly if you work in an industry, that, that Christmas starts on the 1st of December and you have your Christmas parties and everything's about Christmas, all the adverts on telly about Christmas, everything's about Christmas. But actually Christmas isn't until the 20, or the, the evening of the 24th of December. And so Advent is that beautiful preparation time. And we try to do that, we encourage people to we have a holy hour on a Sunday afternoon uh, and evening prayer. We, we try to do things like that to give people an opportunity to, to, to find space, if you like, to to understand what the real meaning of Christmas is. And that's really important. It's a bit like when Easter and, and saying, hold on, there are particular reasons that, you know, that, that, that there is an Easter. There are the reasons there is a, you know, it's, it's almost like some people on December the 26th take down their decorations. <laughs> yeah. And you must be thinking, well, no, please don't. <laughs> yeah. When I was, um, used to work at St Mary's in Bishop's Dorford and we used to do our Christmas dinner, our departmental Christmas dinner in January. We wouldn't do it before Christmas, out of a matter of principle, saying, well, actually, Christmas it doesn't start till the 25th of December, so we will have our Christmas dinner sometime in January. So that's what we do. And you've, um, so you've become a deacon. Yes. Would you hope that other people may, may join you? I hope so. Um, we, do, we do every year um, have a, what's called a road show. It's a different lot. Two years ago, it was in Epping, or just before the lockdowns in Epping. We had one in Colchester, and we get a number of men come in. Uh, I think there's there's an age an age thing you have to, have to be in. Um, I don't think there's an, actually an upper age limit, but there is a lower age limit. I think um, so. So you 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 we we try to encourage people to think about that. And I certainly, if someone was to say to me, and I thought, oh, you know, I would certainly try to encourage someone to do that. And and. You have Father Bernard here. Yeah, he's wonderful. Yeah, and he, but some other diocese, I was just, because I run your Thurrock as well, I just happened to somebody down in Thurrock and saying how times are they struggle to, you know, the audience, the audience are great, you know, congregations are great, but getting the priests is, is a challenge, well, isn't it? There is, there's so, so, so few priests, I think, and it's such, such a struggle. Um, which, I think, in a sense, is, is why I think the diaconate is important because we can take the pressure off the priest. We can do things, you know, so if, if say for example, Father Burnham has three or four baptisms every weekend, he doesn't always, but sometimes you might have three or four. And so he either does them in mass or, before, or after mass. Whereas a deacon could actually take that off his back and say, well, I'll do that, there's no problems. I think next weekend I've got two baptisms, which, which saves him a bit of time, you know, and I think that's what we try to do. Speaking of baptisms, is it people still having their children baptised? And, yeah, and that's yeah. encouraging, isn't it? Very often. It's, it's, quite, it's quite, I think, it's quite amazing the amount of people who do come forward for baptism. You know, and we, we haven't had any adults this year for baptism, uh, but obviously I think COVID's put, we used to have quite a few, I think one year we were at five, um, but you get a couple each year normally, adults who want to go through the, the, the process and be, and be baptised at Easter. 
And you mentioned COVID in March 2020, but you were able to embrace technology to make sure that people still have access oh, to all the services. Yeah. That was a fantastic service. Well, Did I, you get a lot of feedback? We have. I think it, one of the things, I, and before I actually give you a thing run down here, uh, Sue McGuigan, who's, who's the head of, of Holy Cross, or God rest her soul, um, really, she, she put her heart and soul into not just the school, but into the parish as well. And that's what she wanted. She wanted to get that in, so we put the camera in up there, um, which is fabulous. She, she paid for it. Um, we do it through YouTube, and I think it's been a massive success. I think, you know, we do, the kids do their services. I think there's a carol concert today. They'll probably have the camera on for that. So it's great that parents who can't come in because of COVID can actually still see their kids' school plays and carol concerts and stuff. So. And Tony Rowley, thank you very much for your My time. My pleasure, Mike.